Speaker six. From community leader to term six term city councillor, our first speaker of Act Two has devoted her lifetime to building an inspiring, equitable, and welcoming city. Please welcome to the stage Drew Farrell. <laughs> Swimming with a sperm whale is a spectacular thing. Spectacular. It's a big word, maybe a bit overused. Breathtaking, amazing, dazzling, awesome. Now awe, that's a tiny word that describes something vast that challenges our understanding of the world. We often experience awe while in nature. It's hard not to. The star-filled sky, the northern lights, view from a mountaintop, those are the moments of touching the sublime, like being humbled and wonderstruck all at once. It's a glimpse into the world bigger than ourselves, the goosebumps and the caught breath. It requires us to stop, breathe, pay attention. Awe increases our sense that we are part of a greater whole, more connected to the world and the people around us. Feeling awe slows down time. It helps us focus in the moment, but you also need to slow down to feel awe. It doesn't need vastness. Awe can be found in the everyday. We're surrounded by small wonders, enough for our daily dose of awe. We just need to pay attention. Find delight in the small things. It's a bumblebee having a party in a big pink flower. It's the vast universe contained in a moss-covered stump. It's a forest of trees locking toes with each other through their fungal networks. Architecture can be spectacular. Breathtaking celebrations of curves and light. Cities can always use a little eye candy, a little razzle-dazzle to brighten up the skyline. Great architecture can inspire cur curiosity and camaraderie and sometimes, and maybe hopefully, controversy. Sometimes and something special happens when architecture is both awesome and welcoming. It can bridge divides and create a sense of belonging. It can be an unapologetic tribute to equity, beauty, comfort, and dignity. It can say, you are welcome here, come on in. You know that feeling you get when you share a spectacular experience with others? It's called collective effervescence. It's coming together with a joyful shared experience, often with strangers. It can be through music or creating something together or even a snowball fight. We often find our greatest moments of joy through collective effervescence. Remember this, 500 illuminated balls were dropped into the bow as a performance piece called River of Light. What a riot. Thousands of Calgarians joined in and people talked about it for years. From moments of collective joy to an epidemic of loneliness, how did we get here? People are feeling more stressed, impatient with each other, more isolated, and their health is suffering. What does this have to do with design, you may ask? Well more than you may think. Streets used to be bustling, social places, but our relationship with the street and hence each other has changed. Once messy hives of activity, streets are now places to move through. The modern city is built to be vandal proof and for maximum efficiency. A city's built environment impacts our health. We're seeing fewer casual interactions saying good morning, chatting with a cashier, holding a door. They're being designed out of our daily lives, yet they're ways that we humanize each other, make us feel connected, feel seen. Health impacts of loneliness are greater in older adults. Researchers say it's a more important factor of health than finances. Seniors should never age out of their communities, and there are everyday solutions to keep them connected. So how can cities bring us together? By designing bumping into spaces, walkable, bikeable streets for all ages and abilities, welcoming parks. It's about mixing uses, 
adding play, and providing opportunities for social interaction in all seasons. It's the role of the urban designer, I would say the most important role, is to foster social bonds. Those random encounters matter. Casual connections with a stranger build compassion. How many conversations are started over the antics of our furry friends at the dog park? For people who can't escape to the country, they should be able to experience nature and awe right where they live, to picnic under a tree canopy, a place to cool off on a hot day, a place to dip their toes in the water. It's measuring the success of a street, not just by efficiency, but by positive human encounters, whether kids feel safe walking or biking to school, the impacts on health, air, noise pollution, and climate, whether this street unites us or divides us. Shared endeavors connect us with each other. They create space for empathy. They show that we belong to one another. I'd like to celebrate tonight all the urban alchemists out there. It's Tamara who placed diaries on public benches encouraging people to share their thoughts and messages. It's Jane, who walks on stilts through her neighborhood and hosts fire pit visits in a local park. And it's Sherry, who introduced us to little libraries, but who also added wheels to a picnic table and rolled it through her neighborhood to bring people together. What would happen if we put down our phones for a while, said good morning to our strangers, were gentle with each other? What if we slowed down paid attention, felt joy in the small things, and then shared it. Now wouldn't that be spectacular? <laughs>